In this video, we'll be replacing the fuel pump assembly on a 2001 through a 2008 Audi A4. In this case, this is a 2006 Audi A4. Luckily, removing the back seat is really easy. There's just two clips that go on right here and then one on the other side and same on the seat. And you just need to pull up real hard on those clips and that's the only thing holding the seat in. And then you can just pull it out. If you did have heated seats, there'd be some cords you need to unplug, but probably you don't have heated seats. On the passenger side of the car is the fuel pump and the fuel pump assembly, and this is what we're going to be replacing. There's three Phillips screws, one at each corner of this triangle, and then you might need to pry it off with a flathead screwdriver because it's got a little bit of stickiness to it. It's best if the tank is below half a tank. If it's above half a tank, you're probably going to have some gas leaking out of those lines. If it's below half a tank, you're gonna have less leaking out. You might still have a little bit, but if it's below half, you should be good. These fuel connectors here can be a little tricky to get out, but what you've gotta do is these little blue things, they lift up. So basically I'm gonna grab it with my fingers and pull up, just like that. You can see that, how it's lifting the bottom up. That's what I'm gonna grab. So whenever I grab this, if there's the same exact thing on the other side, I'm gonna squeeze and pull up at the same time. Now you can see how those connectors right here, they just went right over this lip on this thing that's sticking out of the fuel pump assembly. That's why you gotta push these up and then it lifts the bottom of it up over that lip. Same thing with this one, except it's gonna be less fun because you've got less room on this side. It's gonna be really hard to get anything in there. I'm probably gonna use the screwdriver to push it in. And then on the other side, try to use my finger, but still, you know, you've got some things in the way, so it might be a bit harder. And man, that one was a pain. I probably spent 15 minutes on it. So the system here is similar to a collet where whenever I take these side hooks, the things that we were pulling up on, whenever I push them all the way down, they actually clamp down onto it. So what I was doing is when this connector is on that post, I was pushing it down. And what that did was it lifted these tabs up. And what that does is it gives it room for these to flex around this post and around the thing that's holding it in. So really pushing it down, holding the tabs and lifting it back up is what got it out. In order to get this off, what there is, is there's a little plastic tab right here on the connector. And then there's a receiving hole for that tab. And what you gotta do is basically lift up this tab right here where that fits into. So whenever this is down there, there's a little piece of plastic that was here that broke off. But basically, the idea is you want to get under that and lift that tab up so that that hole comes off of that little bump. You would think that you'd just be able to put a screwdriver in here, pry it in the way you think it should come off, and then it would. But really, this was a big pain to try to get this off, and a lot of it actually ended up breaking off. That's not a huge deal because whenever this goes on, it still snaps in place and hold it, but the whole mechanism, I think, was way over-engineered. Next, we need to take off this ring here, and this is what's holding the whole fuel pump assembly down in there. And a lot of a lot of times, we'll just use like a screwdriver or something, and use that to wedge it in there. But as a general rule of thumb, it's always a good idea not to use metal on metal contact whenever you're working around fuel systems that are really flammable. If this were to slip off or you hit it in the wrong way, there could be a spark that forms, and sparks and fuel really don't go well together. So it's always a good idea to have something that won't spark. Like I have. This is what I'm going to use to get caught on there. This is a piece of copper, and then I've got this brass hammer here that I made that I'm going to use, and it also has a nylon head, so there's really no way for anything to spark. And it's about there. There we go. Now this is loosened up. Need a few more taps to loosen it up right here. We lift up those fuel lines, this whole ring comes out. Pull out the fuel pump assembly and just, of course, be careful of these fuel pump lines. You don't want to break those. And also, if there is dirt around here, I'd recommend vacuuming that out so it doesn't fall into the fuel tank. Start to pull this out carefully. We'll pour the fuel out because fuel's getting more expensive. There are a few differences between this pump, which was a $60 pump from carparts.com, and then this is the original VDO pump, which is the OE supplier. 
There's a few differences I can see just visually off the bat. Obviously, the two floats are a little bit different. I don't think that would really be an issue, and if it is, you could just take the old float off and put it on the new one. It's the same mechanism. The main difference that I really noticed was right here where that return line went in. There's not anything like that on this one, actually. That, you can see this is on the other side of the float. On the other side of the float, there's nothing there. The only thing close to that is almost like this little basket thing. And I think what we can do is probably just snip that out. Just snip it out. This hole goes all the way down now. This hose here is completely unused. It wasn't used in the old part. We're not gonna use it or plug it into anything on this new pump. I'm just gonna pull this little plastic thing out so that won't fall into the tank. But I'm gonna keep this little cap on the top there so we don't have fumes. You can see if you can press them, this one's definitely higher than this one, which I'm confused by as well because this one's also at an angle, this one isn't. And it seems like as we go along, I keep noticing differences between these when they should have been the same. I'm gonna switch out the, these pins between the two and that's because the pins that are coming out of here are in the straight holes and you can see these are obviously at an angle. And this actually has the places to accept the angled pins, but the pins are in the wrong holes on this. And that's why this thing is appearing to be too long. Work these pins out with some pliers. This metal shaft is much too big to be able to fit in that hole. I'll probably need to take off about five or 10 thousandths in order for it to press fit in there. Now we've got everything converted over. Assemble everything and tap the ring back on. Put these connectors on. And the electrical connector. And we'll start it up. We'll look back here for any leaks and I can already tell that started up a lot faster than it normally does. So that's a good sign. 